Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Jean-Max Lim of JSA, and joining me today is Mario Calderon, VP of Real Estate of Server Farm. And Mario, thank you so much for joining us at JSA. It's my pleasure. Nice to, nice to be with you. <laughs> Good to have you. And uh, now for our viewers who may not already know, and I'm sure many of them already do, can you tell us a little bit about what makes Server Farm unique as an organization? Uh, sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so Server Farm is a, a data center um, ownership and operating company. Uh, we specialize in the uh, physical infrastructure associated with the data center. We control a, a global portfolio. And I think what really makes us unique is that we primarily uh, uh, focus on existing uh, facilities uh, for, for our new data center uh, footprint. So we typically will acquire existing data center assets that are poorly utilized and uh, create efficiency within those, uh, those data centers, create additional capacity, and then sell that to our customer base. And our company is structured uh, from a skill set to allow us to accomplish uh, that, that business objective. And Mario, um, Server Farm recently announced its acquisition of a 117,500 square foot data center uh, in the ever evolving Los Angeles market. Can you tell us more about the latest addition to your global portfolio and what made this acquisition so appealing? Sure, happy to. Um, so the, uh, this acquisition was a, a strategic decision on the part of Server Farm uh, to enter the LA market. We're actually headquartered uh, uh, about five blocks away from, the, from this facility. So we were um, very much aware of the facility, very knowledgeable on, uh, on its capabilities. We're never quite sure in the past uh, about the LA market just because of uh, it, 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 the cost of doing business in that market. Um, but recently we've noticed a significant uptick in our customer uh, interest in the LA market. And we believe that uh, the timing is right now um, for the acquisition of capacity uh, in that market. And for Server Farm, it's basically an edge play. So we, we've acquired a facility that is in the heart of one of the largest population centers in the United States. Um, that facility is, has, a, has a scale that's uh, just about the right size fit for Server Farm. Uh, between that 115, 125,000 square feet, uh, we can uh, deploy sufficient capacity in that facility that we can accommodate the customers who are uh, interested in, in us expanding in that marketplace. So, you know, the facility uh, was pretty much prototype for, for server farm, existing facility, um, uh, some customer base, in, in, in existing customer base in that facility, but the utilization is, is, is not very high. Um, so there's a significant amount of capacity that we can offer to customers that still is not utilized within that facility. So it's, it's, got, a, it's got a good location. Uh, power uh, is available in, within that facility so that we can scale up the capacity and it's got great network connectivity uh, from that location. So um, we, we thought it was a very strategic addition to our portfolio. And again, uh, we think the timing is right uh, for the uh, for the LA marketplace. Well, the demand is certainly there. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And it's it's not uh, it's not heavily served either. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, just the, the the prohibitive cost base over the years has limited the amount of supply available in the in the LA market. I don't know that it'll ever be uh, a massive data center market, but there is a, uh, a very sophisticated, entrenched um, uh, business uh, community within, within the LA market, um, a lot of which is very, very dependent on uh, digital uh, infrastructure. So, uh, so we think the timing is right, and we think that uh, there's, there's, a, there's a not a sufficient supply of capacity within that market. We've acquired this asset and we will likely look to, uh, to, to grow that capacity. If we look into your role then as VP of uh, real estate, when Server Farm looks to grow its status in the portfolio, mm -hmm. what are you looking for in a facility? You briefly touched on this, but like, what are the specifics of what you look for in the facility and what are the most important factors uh, for your clients? 
Sure. Um, well, the, the most important thing would be the, the market that the facility is located in. It, it, it has to be a market that we feel we can compete effectively in and can, and can generate uh, customer demand. Do our customers want to be there? So that's one of the primary motivating factors uh, for server farm in any of the markets that, that, that we pursue. Um, and then there are a whole host of other uh, factors associated with the, with the property. Um, we typically try where possible to buy existing assets that have some income stream attached to them. So we're not starting from ground zero. Uh, this particular asset in El Segundo did have uh, um, uh, an income uh, in place uh, whenever we acquired it. Um, it was uh, not, uh, not heavily utilized. There's a lot of run rate left in that facility. So that's, and, and then that opens up some of the other considerations that we have. I mean, we as a company are looking to create value, to, to add value to these assets. And one of the ways that we do that is to open up this capacity to our customers. So there was a sufficient amount of unutilized capacity in this facility that it was attractive to us because we, we knew that it would be attractive to our customer base. So, and, and the way that Server Farm is structured, um, in-house, we have a, a full operations uh, team, operations capability. So we would bring our operations team to that facility and uh, if possible, uh, generate more efficiency through our, our internal operating model. And then uh, we also uh, employ a uh, development and construction engineering team. So our construction engineering team was able to go into that facility look at the existing mechanical electrical infrastructure, the topology, and determine that we could add sufficient capacity uh, efficiently so that uh, we could service a customer base. So we're looking at market, we're looking at, and, and also the scale of the asset. Uh, the scale of that asset was appropriate for us. I mean, we typically are looking at for something on the small side, 80,000 square feet, but really this 100, 15, 120,000 square foot is pretty much a perfect bite size uh, for us. We can, we can put sufficient capacity in there that we could accommodate our customer base. Hmm. So it's a future-proof asset. Um, it's an acquisition for the future as well, not just the now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, we, th we think Los Angeles will be, is a, is a, is a coming market. Uh, you know, it's not one of the larger data center markets in the world today because um, it, 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 uh, the, the cost of doing business there has been high. Um, there hasn't been a lot of uh, data center development there. And that's one of the other reasons why we're interested in the market now. We think that all the edge um, that demand um, is, you know, the timing is right for a lot of the hyperscalers to move into this location. So even though uh, this, this data center has, has some scale to it, it's really more or less an edge play on the, on the part of server farm where you know, we're acquiring an asset that's deep into the heart of this massive population center. Significant amount of network capacity in this area. So we have, uh, we have adequate uh, network capacity uh, as well as uh, as utility uh, available to the data center, those are those are some of the other important considerations in looking at uh, in looking at an asset and whether or not it's uh, it's going to work for server farm. Um, I think I got myself confused between LA and San Francisco, considering the whole corridor right. <laughs> all the way up there. So yeah, San Francisco has been a, it's been a very different a very different animal. It's been quite active. It is mm -hmm. one of the larger data center markets in the world. I think LA, um, you know, will, will always be somewhat uh, more limited, but there is uh, a significant um, uh, industrial base in, in the LA area, and we believe it's underserved. So uh, we're looking at, uh, obviously, we're interested in the, uh, the facility that we just acquired, but uh, potentially looking at, at some additional capacity um, uh, additions. It sounds very interesting. I mean, I know your um, company organization quite well because I've had the opportunity to sit down with quite a few of your colleagues over the years. Um, yeah. I know it's quite unique compared to some of the other providers out there. Yeah. Um, but if we look at a special segment um, of the market out there, so the enterprise, what would you say to an enterprise who see their own data center um, as a burden to their balance sheet? Well, we deal with that 
quite often. Um, that is one of our primary <clears throat> targets uh, for uh, capacity additions, you know, new acquisitions. And there is quite a dynamic going on in, in the global uh, data center market today where um, years ago, 10, 15, whatever uh, years ago, many enterprise entities had no choice but to build their own data center. And they did build these data centers with the idea that their capacity and utilization would continue to increase as it had in the previous 10 years. Well, um, basically none of that happened. Uh, these companies built these fairly large data centers with growth capacity. Uh, in fact, most of the companies that, that we look at, most of the enterprises uh, have not grown their capacity and in fact have shrunk their, their capacity within these facilities. So they end up with uh, large, extremely expensive assets sitting on their balance sheet that are very, very poorly utilized. So the cost uh, to run, manage, uh, maintain, upkeep the data centers, is just prohibitively expensive. And we see that all the time uh, around the world. So, uh, and as I mentioned before, Server Farm is sort of structured to A, um, be perfectly positioned to acquire an asset like that from an enterprise entity and then work with that enterprise entity to help them to uh, right size um, their, uh, their footprint within that data center, allow them to maintain uh, uh, on-prem capacity within the data center, but only pay for what they're actually utilizing. And then typically we would free up uh, we would free up the excess capacity to our customer base. So that's kind of a key ingredient to the server farm business model. And as I said before, we're structured from a talent base um, in, in order to accomplish exactly that, that, uh, that business model. Mm -hmm. And that's the combination of uh, real estate, uh, finance, uh, a, a very experienced operations team, very experienced engineering and development team. And we combine all of that together into a, a, a coordinated unit to be able to uh, acquire these assets, but really uh, really to, to help the enterprise uh, become more efficient in their utilization of the, uh, of the data center. Which goes in line with the wider trends in the industry of the as a service, um, service adoption as well. Um, and I think your concept of sending back the capacity that's not utilized back to the customer, that's quite interesting um, right. and how you spread capacity. So sure. that's, that's a differentiator, I would say. Right. And, and in many cases, um, we would utilize or we would uh, open this capacity in, 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 uh, to, to uh, various hyperscalers and hyperscalers may want uh, or have an interest in this excess capacity because the customers that we typically deal with that we're buying these data center from data centers from are you know, world class companies that the hyperscalers would want to deal with anyway. Uh, you put them two side by side, and it creates this uh, you know this uh, this this great combination uh, of, of entities in, in the data center. Speaking of great combination, a great topic that can never go in touch with uh, when we talk about acquisitions and building facilities nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, it's sustainability, so climate change. Um, saving planet Earth. Um, how does this recent acquisition in Los Angeles aligns with your company's sustainability mission and goals? From a sustainability standpoint? Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think our entire business model is, is sort of built around a, a concept of sustainability. Um, you know, we, we rather than build new data centers, we're designed to take existing legacy facilities and make them uh, more efficient and far more usable. So in essence, um, you know, we, we are uh, rehabilitating, modernizing existing uh, facilities and, uh, and it eliminates the need to build new stuff. So, so basically uh, virtually every one of our facilities, uh, Chicago, uh, Moses Lake, Washington, uh, Atlanta, Toronto, all of those facilities we acquired as existing assets and modernized, um, created uh, in-house efficiencies within the data centers. And it eliminated the need to go out and acquire or build and utilize all the building materials associated with, with, uh, with a new facility. So, 
And we think there is a very substantial market of uh, existing uh, facilities that uh, are perfectly adaptable um, for this, this modern take on, on the enterprise data center. We go in, create a co-location arrangement for the, uh, for the enterprise, and then bring other customers in, and it negates the need to build new data centers. To me, it's, a, it's sort of a, a perfect combination for a sustainability model. The enterprise wins, the, uh, the uh, third-party customers who come in win because you know, we, um, uh, we're providing this capacity to them in, a, in an existing facility. And Server Farm benefits also because it, it's certainly a part of our business model and a piece of our success. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, sustainability has become part of the evolution of the, the modern data center, let's call it that way. Um, mm -hmm. There's other things changing. And with enterprises experimenting with the public cloud and hybrid IT, uh, what do you see as the role of the wholesale data center moving forward? Well, I think it has a very critical uh, uh, role in, uh, in uh, the dynamics uh, of, of the modern data center. Um, so, as I mentioned before, uh, you know, enterprise, all of our customers are certainly looking at uh, some, some level of, of, uh, of cloud deployment. Um, but as we've found out is that uh, most of our customers have a component of their IT requirements that uh, really uh, don't belong in, in, in a cloud environment. They're perfectly suited for on-premises uh, capacity. And um, so what, what, we've, what we, we've, we've been working with our customers is that uh, keeping the in-house uh, IT deployment uh, in-house, uh, the, the, the piece that's necessary, bring in other companies, in many cases, like I said, hyperscalers, who um, would be able to handle the customer's uh, um, cloud requirements and doing as much of that on-premises as possible. So it's sort of, putting the IT loads in the right place, keeping the on-premises load on-premises and allowing that customer then to uh, deploy uh, a cloud-based uh, deployment uh, where necessary, either on our site or through other off-site uh, cloud deployments. And then building on that and uh, on everything else you've said um, throughout these chats as well, uh, especially around the potential future expansions into other markets and current markets, mm -hmm. what are you working, you, your team, Server Farm, what are you working on for 2021 and even beyond? But what's what's in the pipeline? Yeah, so um, we are a, uh, a very active and expanding company. Um, we continue to look for... Uh, uh, strategic acquisitions uh, in locations that we think uh, will be viable for, for our customer base. So for example, uh, right now, um, we just completed, of course, the acquisition of the facility in Los Angeles. We are looking at increasing our footprint in the Los Angeles market. Uh, more to come on that soon. Toronto, uh, uh, I guess in the last uh, 18 months or so, we completely redeveloped uh, our uh, asset in the, uh, in the Toronto market, uh, gutted it, uh, created a brand new mechanical electrical infrastructure, um, created a significant co-location uh, lease with, uh, with a significant um, international hyperscaler. And we are now actively engaged in discussions to increase uh, the capacity there. And also we have the ability to build another building uh, on that site. And we're working on, uh, on uh, getting all of the entitlement and all the other planning uh, components in, in, in place so that we can build that other building because there is significant customer demand in that Toronto market. And I guess the last significant piece that, that we've got is, um, you know, Again, uh, customer uh, interest, customer demand, and some somewhat of a an in-house advantage. Uh, we're we're actively engaged in uh, development uh, in, uh, in in Israel. So uh, new market for us, something that's just sort of uh, that market has begun to explode. Um, our parent company is Israeli based, so um, we have a bit of a of a built-in advantage there. And uh, we're actively engaged in securing sites and building in Israel right now. So I, I think Israel um, 
checks a couple of boxes. Uh, a, it's it's a um, it, it, it's a very sophisticated uh, uh, free market economy, um, relatively stable uh, governmental uh, situation there, um, sort of an anchoring location in uh, the EMEA uh, market area. Um, you know, uh, very highly educated workforce, um, and with without a significant uh, uh, digital infrastructure deployment throughout the country there. So I think the country is looking to expand that, grow that that infrastructure, that digital infrastructure uh, network, and um, they need they need capacity. So it's 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 very much under supply. Um, it's a very difficult company or country to uh, to work in just because it's uh, you know uh, language, uh, currency, uh, et cetera, et cetera, difficult uh, um, you know uh, in, in terms of uh, getting approvals for for new site development. And so we have a bit of an advantage there. So um, I think it'll be a very successful expansion for for server farm. And again, there's a fair amount of uh, customer demand to be in that location. And I think, you know, a number of our customers see that as a jump off sport, uh, part, uh, point um, for the greater uh, Middle East and then uh, the Northern Africa region. Yeah. Well, it's, it's definitely a very interesting market and a differentiator um, mm -hmm. of the entire region. But Mario, you've got so much going on in the US, in Canada, uh, here in EMEA. What can, where can our listeners find out more information about you and your projects and where you're going next? Sure. Um, well, probably the best spot would be to uh, to uh, check out our website. Um, you know, our website has a ton of information about our existing locations. Um, uh, you know, discussion about our operations model, how we how we look at the uh, the data center world, how we run things. Uh, we haven't even gotten into one big differentiator for Server Farm, which is our proprietary in command. Uh, data center management service platform mm. uh, that we employ throughout our portfolio and we employ um, on a third party basis for a number of major uh, uh, global uh, enterprise entities. And that is a, um, uh, it, it, it's, it's a system that sort of binds our entire uh, portfolio, all of our operations together and that makes us, helps us to, to, to make us a much more efficient data center operator and helps our customers to become very efficient within our data centers. Um, so yeah, so you can check out our website, uh, serverfarmllc.com uh, is a great source for, for all that additional information. And then I, I, I believe we've got a uh, podcast uh, that's gonna be coming up that uh, will, will provide a great deal of, of additional information. More to come on that. No, for sure. And um, well, Mario, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I thought that was very interesting and very good points made. Um, mm -hmm. I can't wait to see where you go next. I mean, you mentioned a few, but I can't wait to see expansion. I love a good data center expansion. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, and be sure to stay tuned for the launch of the Server Farms podcast, like Mario referred, the future of data centers. This will be a mini podcast series from the viewpoint of server farmers and data growers. I will be joined by other influencers, journalists, and server farm experts to explore the industry's most pressing topics in this unique mini podcast series. For more information, visit serverfarmllc.com slash podcasts. Thank you so much for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA podcasts. Until next time, happy networking. Thank you.